if we're talking about some core KDE application, whether it be Plasma or mm -hmm. some other core thing to the environment, yeah. how does the design make its way into that? What is the what is the process that happens when you want to do some sort of big design change? Yeah, so I, I, there are a couple of ways to answer this question. And I think the most common one is that uh, developers and, or volunteer developers join the, the community in, in an effort to put out some kind of improvement to the code. Mm -hmm. and, in the, and in those cases, at least a KDE uh, or let's just say Plasma desktop, uh, they submit a merge request into our, our Git. Right, they clone our repos and they like submit a patch or whatever they want to do. Most of the times, it seems like developers create their own UI and process their own UX based on the feature they want to put out ahead of time. And so when they put in the merge request, most of the times they already have thought out of, of a UI for this. And they request the feedback of the community. And that's when it comes to, you know, most of the times uh, they go on, on GitLab, in, in our case, uh, and uh, if it's necessary, they tag the VDG or the visual design group team at Plasma. Mm -hmm. When that happens, a few of us actually get a notification. We go into that merge request and we evaluate the, the, the change they want to make. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's usually what I do most times. I just go into a merge request and uh, I give advice on, you know, the UI. Uh, I try the best I can not to <laughs> actually redesign everything in my head. I try to, you know, I do my best to stay within constraints because at the same time, we have to understand that we're working with volunteers that are doing this on their spare time mm -hmm. and that, you know, they... Just as I am not a developer expert, they're not necessarily a UI or UX expert, and we have to balance those things out. Mm -hmm. So that's the one, the one of the most common ways. Sometimes there are people who preempt their idea and they submit an issue ticket to our, our channels and they say, hey, I have this crazy idea. I want to make this awesome feature. And, uh, you know, I've been thinking about X, Y, and Z. Here's, here are my thoughts and here are some early mockups or whatever they make. And they put it on either on GitLab or, or uh, bugs.kd.org. And uh, again, same process. It gets so tagged well, for the video. One, one second we before we, on I want to sidetrack there for just a moment. A lot of people yeah. will assume that the Bugzilla is just for bugs. It is. Yeah. It, and for the most part, it is. However, you can go on Bugzilla for, for Plasma and you can actually submit um, you can submit a ticket that is a wish list ticket. So instead of saying, you know, this is a bug, you on the uh, on the category section you put that it's a wish list, or uh, uh, and that basically tells us that it's an idea, that it's a thought, that you're proposing something. Um, at the end of the day, though, I think if if there are specific changes, we would channel those changes into GitLab anyway. Mm -hmm. But it is okay for people to begin discussions around improvements and design changes, either on Bugzilla or GitLab. Uh, I mean, we get people submitting ideas on on this cuss, so you know it right. can come from anywhere. But it, eventually, we would work with that with that volunteer and bring them over and see if they can actually execute the code that they are looking for um, to to in integrate into Plasma. Yeah. So those are some ways that people submit things. Mm -hmm. So what's an example that you've actually worked on that would be something that the VDG is concerned with? Yeah, good question. So, um, well, I, I comment on just about anything that relates to the VDG, <laughs> but um, for example, one that I always remember because it was something that I pushed for is the current... Uh, uh, layout that we have in system settings is something that I came up with originally a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, system settings since then has seen a lot of changes, and I'm not going to take credit for something I haven't done. But the, by and large, the organization that you see today, the layouting, is something that I came up with. Mm -hmm. um, and we had discussions around this. 
uh, back then, I think when we proposed this, things were a little bit different. So um, it wasn't quite a, as, as a workflow that we have today. So things were sort of a little faster to production. And as long as I had somebody, a developer who believed in the, in the vision of these changes, uh, they were able to implement it. Mm -hmm. um, so, but for example, I commented in just about anything like uh, the panel resizing, the edit mode in in Plasma. I've worked on um, the calendar widget. I've worked on the weather widget. I've worked on the like a ton, just about anything that is, is tagged VDG. Uh, we go in and give comments. So I, I take that as work for myself. So mm -hmm. yeah. Before you go too far on, it's probably worth explaining like what the VDG is and how people actually get involved with it. Yeah, absolutely. So the VDG stands for the Visual Design System. It was created a few years back in the 2010s, and uh, it was the intention of it was to basically concentrate all discussions that were related to user uh, interfaces and experience, and uh, basically. It, the end goal at the time was to basically work it into Breeze, mm -hmm. uh, so that Breeze, the Breeze um, uh, design was sort of pushed forward and with the help of a lot of volunteers. And uh, so we formed this group. Um, it was really cool. It was led by other people at, in the beginning. Uh, I was just a regular contributor uh, and commentator. But um, yeah, it, uh, the, our purpose is basically to bring only UI, UX related discussions into this chat. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, sometimes it, of course, not everything is monolithic like that, but like, we derive into other types of discussions. But um, by and large, we just discuss graphics. How do you execute this type of, uh, you know, look, these colors? How do you work with animation? Uh, it can get very technical, but uh, in many instances, it gets very sort of on the surface, right? Like we talk about front end very uh, extensively uh, and how we want things to be perceived. If we struggle with a certain design decision, we talk it out. Um, I struggle with that sometimes, but it, it's helpful. Uh, but yeah, that's mainly the angle of it. And if there are any other discussions, sometimes like, you know, we have things that deal primarily with our frameworks or bugs, and we just sort of try to redirect those to their appropriate channels. So our channel is mainly, mainly directed to working with UI front end work, basically. Mm -hmm. But obviously functionality is going to be kind of directly tied into that, especially when you start talking yeah. like UX stuff, like a user experience mm -hmm. is a mix of both graphics, the front end visual design, along with the functionality. Yeah, absolutely. So when, so we, when we talk about UI, you know, if, if the question is what color should I use in this situation, that's an easy UI question, right? Sure. But if you're talking about why blue is a good color for people on a computer, mm -hmm. that's a that's a UX question, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, when I when we receive questions in the VDG that relate to, for example, um, let's see, for example, most recently we were discussing uh, how to deal with uh, with do not disturb mm -hmm. uh, in Plasma. Do not disturb uh, appears on the taskbar. You open it up and you turn it on, but as you turn it on, immediately you get a pop-up, uh, a context menu that tells you these are your options. You can to enable this for an hour until next morning mm -hmm. or uh, indefinitely, right? And so, uh, who, however this was designed, I looked into it and I felt that there were a couple of user experience problems, right? Mm. For one, in our guidelines say that switches need to be uh, instant apply. And this switch does not do that, right? Mm -hmm. When you click enable, it shows you a menu and you have to click a second time to enable one of the options. So if I'm thinking of, you know, UX is, is from a user experience per perspective, I have to think for the user, for the regular user, and I have to think within certain parameters, for example, I have to think that most times users want to click the least to achieve the most. And so if we go by that type of guideline, 
preventing people from instant apply on on uh, do not disturb defeats that purpose because you don't get it applied immediately. You get it applied after a second click, and that is called um, uh, interaction cost. So in, your interaction cost goes up, and users. Not, I'm not saying this is the biggest problem of the world, but like users will get slowed down by trying to achieve the most common thing, which is to just enable indefinitely, and then you can choose additional parameters to stop it automatically. Mm -hmm. So I suggested a few things that you know you could do to solve that. So you see how the questions are different, right? Mm -hmm. Like one is about you know graphics, colors, applications of such, and then the other is more like how do people perceive what you're what you're putting out in the front end mm -hmm. and so and there's a few guidelines that you want to follow there